In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi retro gaming console. I'll go through the hardware, including my recommendations. I'll go over the software just a little bit, just an overview, and I will do the actual guide, including how to get ROMs on there. So here we go. Let's talk about the hardware requirements. So first and foremost, the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. I'm in the US, so for me, Adafruit makes the most sense for ordering, and you can get the one, two, four, or eight gigabyte RAM models. And so for most emulators, two gigabytes of RAM is actually sufficient, but you could definitely go for four gigabytes to give yourself a nice buffer. And if you have the money, just go for eight, why not? Now for a case, I use this case by Retroflag. It's called the Nest Pi 4 case. There's actually quite a few cases that are compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4 by Retroflag, but really just find any case that suits your tastes. Uh, this one I like because the power and reset buttons actually work and there's like a safe shutdown option with this power button. And these USBs on the front, they match up with where the controller ports are on the actual NES. And it comes with a NES cartridge, which is, it's blank, there's nothing in it. But you can put an SSD in here and then slide this into the slot, just like the cartridge into the actual console. And uh, you get extra storage, right? You have that extra storage option. You have to set it up manually, of course, but that's a nice option to have. So for a micro SD card, I use the Samsung Evo Select 128 gigabyte. And if you get that one, that's pretty much gonna be, I mean, for most people, that's gonna be more than you'll ever need unless you're trying to have like a comprehensive list of all ROMs from like every console available on the RetroPie. And if you wanna look into a different brand or different option for a micro SD card, there is a list, a compatibility list linked on the RetroPie website and it is comprehensive. So it goes through, I guess, every or most every option and lists whether it is compatible or not. So just take a look at that and see if the one you're looking at is compatible. So next you'll need a USB 3 to SD card adapter. And for me, I use this little dongle thing by Ugreen. Uh, it's a little bit overkill because it has like four different options for like flash and whatever uh, storage. You can definitely find simpler ones. There's ones that look like a USB stick and then the side of the USB stick is like the slots for the SD card or micro SD card. If you can find a brand that looks familiar or that you're comfortable with, great. I recommend this Ugreen one just because I've used Ugreen stuff before and it never seems to come faulty or factory defected or whatever. But just get something that you're comfortable with and use that. Next, you're gonna need a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. I use an Amazon Basics one that I got on Amazon, obviously. Just make sure that you get one that's long enough for your setup, right? So you don't wanna get a three foot cable and have a six foot reach. And for a power supply, there is an official Raspberry Pi power supply. It's a little bit more expensive than alternatives though. Just search around and you can find five volt, three amp power supplies that will work for the Raspberry Pi. They just have to be USB-C. So for controller, I use the 8-bit DO SN30 Pro and that covers basically everything that I could want because it has the joysticks and it has the L1, R1, L2, R2 buttons. Really, you could just look up any controller on even Amazon, just a USB controller. Just make sure it has all the buttons that you would want for the emulators that you want to play. I just wanna explain what RetroPie is a little bit first. So RetroPie is not the OS. The OS that's running underneath RetroPie is the Raspberry Pi OS, previously called Raspbian. It's based on Debian, which is a very well-known Linux distro. So you have your OS, the Raspberry Pi OS, and then you have your software running on the OS that actually makes up RetroPie. So RetroPie is made up of your emulation software called RetroArc. This is your core emulation framework. This is where your emulators are actually run from. And then you have your front end, the emulation station software, a graphical interface for browsing and launching your games. And basically what RetroPie adds to the mix is some scripts for configuration, ROM management, and a couple system tweaks. Okay, so on to the fun part, the actual setup. So you take your micro SD card and your USB 3.0 to micro SD card adapter, and you plug in your micro SD card, and then you plug in that adapter into your computer. Okay, so we need the Raspberry Pi Imager software. This is the software that will take our micro SD card and it will put the RetroPie image on there. So go ahead and open your browser and you just search for Raspberry Pi Imager. It's this first one right here, Raspberry Pi software, Raspberry Pi. And it's just right here, Raspberry Pi Imager, you download for Windows. And so here it is in my downloads. We just right click, run as administrator, select your correct language and hit okay. We click next, we accept the terms, we click next. You can change the install location if you want, but I'm gonna leave it default and we click next. If you want a desktop shortcut, you can do so by clicking this checkbox. I don't want one, so I click next. 
And we just leave this checked so it'll launch when we click finish. So click finish. So here we go. This is the Raspberry Pi Imager software. So you don't need to download an image or an ISO for this. This software does that for you. So it has those repositories, those addresses kind of built into the software to know where to grab these images. So we just click choose device. We're doing this on a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. So we click this one here. We choose our operating system and we scroll down a bit and we look for emulation and game OS, click on that. And then we click on RetroPie. And then you just pick the appropriate one for your Raspberry Pi. So we're doing this on a Raspberry Pi 4, R Pi 4, so we click this one. And then when you go to choose your storage, just make sure if you have multiple devices plugged in that you choose the correct one. So here's my SD card, so I click this, and then you click next. So it's just letting you know everything's gonna be erased. Is this okay? And so everything is gonna be erased by this process. We realize that, so we click yes. And now we just wait for the image to be written to the micro SD card. And if you get a bunch of Windows pop-ups here saying, hey, you need to format this disk, don't do that. You're gonna overdo the process that we just did. So just carefully click cancel here. So the Raspberry Pi Imager software is telling you, hey, the image has been written to your device and you can now remove the device. So the software actually ejects the device for you and it's safe to remove now. So go ahead and remove your micro SD card and then click continue. And it just kicks you back out to the main screen here of the Raspberry Pi Imager so you can close this now. All right, so we are at the point where we can plug in our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi and then just go and get your Raspberry Pi plugged into all of its cables except the power cable. Leave that one for last until you're ready to follow along with the guide again, because as soon as you plug in the power cable, it's gonna turn on. Okay, I'm powering on the Raspberry Pi. Just let it go through its first time boot up process. And then you see the RetroPie logo. And now we see emulation station loading. So here we are. If you have your controller plugged in at this point or while it was booting, it will detect your controller right away, assuming it's a kind of default USB controller. So we hold down a button on the controller to configure. And then we go through the configuration here. So. It's automatic, so as soon as you press this, it's going to be set. So I'm gonna press through all of my buttons here to define them. So we're done setting up our controller. We just hit the A button that we set and that's it. And here we are. So if you don't see any consoles here, any emulators, don't be concerned. They are on the system. They just don't show up until there's ROMs for that emulator. So there's one more thing we need before we jump over into OBS and I can record that way again. We have to get our IP address. And so I am connected with an Ethernet cable, so it's much simpler for me. If you're not connected with Ethernet, you can go through the Wi-Fi setup process and you can look up a guide on how to do that. But for me, connected through the Ethernet, you just press A on the RetroPie configuration here. And then you just go down to show IP here and press A. It'll kick you over into kind of an old school looking Windows screen. And if you just look closely, it'll have your IP address on there. So just grab that for going back over into Windows and then we can get the ROMs onto the system. So I wanna to touch on ROMs just briefly. So ROMs, these are legally acquired games that you make backups of, and that is the ROM file, a backup of your legally acquired games, the physical copy of your games. So there are sites out there where you can get ROMs and I will not be showing you what those sites are or where to find these ROMs. Uh, if you want to do so, you can do your own research and find them at your own risk. Okay, so we open our file explorer and we just go to the address bar here and we type backslash backslash and then the IP address of the Raspberry Pi that we just found. So 192.168.0.20 for me and hit enter. And this is your Raspberry Pi. So what we want is the ROMs folder here. So go into there. And then all you have to do is take your ROM files for each console that you're interested in. So for example, if you're wanting to put games on for the Sega Genesis, that is the Mega Drive here. That's the other name for it. So Sega Genesis, you just drop all your ROM files for Sega Genesis in this folder. So when you go back over to your Raspberry Pi, you restart it. And when it comes back up, you will see the Sega Genesis there. And if you go into the Sega Genesis option, you will see all the games that you dropped in there. There's one other option that I wanna show you here that's pretty cool. So in your Raspberry Pi folders here, you can see uh, the splash screens. If you drop a just an image or even a video file in here, that will show while the Raspberry Pi is loading up. So instead of seeing the you know, the Linux loading options or loading uh, notifications, I guess you could say, uh, you will see this splash screen that you put in here. And so that's kind of a cool option so that you have something more customized or personalized for your retro gaming console. 
Well, that is basically it, guys. That is enough to get you up and running with a Raspberry Pi retro gaming console. That's not it, of course. There's more things that you can do. There's definitely a lot more that can be done here, but that is the basics to get you up and running. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Let me know if there's anything else you would have liked to have seen. Maybe there's another video I can make on this in the future. Thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next video.